A third is a square root that can't be simplified any further. So often you'll see something like this, the square root of 2. Now if we put that in a calculator, you'll get something like 1.414 with those numbers carrying on forever. Now because those numbers go forever, we call that an irrational number. And if we were to write this down as just 1.414, we've lost the rest of the information that comes afterwards. So often we just keep it as a square root of 2 on paper, or we place that directly into our calculator so that we don't get these rounding errors. Uh, another third you might see is the square root of 3. The square root of 3 is a different irrational number that would come out as 1.732 with those numbers once again going on forever. Now if you move on to the square root of 4, we don't call that a third because over here you can see we've got these things called the square factors. The square root of 4 gives you this whole number of 2, so we don't call that a third. When multiplying thirds, we simply use this rule here. The square root of a times the square root of b will give you the square root of a multiplied by b, or ab. So we could use something like this. The square root of 3 times the square root of 2. Well, what's 3 times 2? Simply going to be the square root of 6. If you like, we could try the square root of 5 times the square root of 7. Well, 5 times 7 is going to give you the square root of 35. You could take it a step further, and we could try something a little trickier. So there's 1, there's 2, here's 3. If I said the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, then what does 5 times 5 give us? We're going to get the square root of 25. At this stage, you have to start recognizing some of the signs, and you can look over here and say, well, the square root of 25 is going to give you 5. So once you see the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 gives you the square root of 25, it's also going to be number 5. The whole number 5, it simplifies down to 5. Another thing you might notice is that the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 could be the same as saying a times a. What does a times a equal in algebra? Well, a times a gives you a squared. So what we're doing here is we're saying the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, if these were the a's, then we're simply making them the square root of 5, and we're squaring that. And what do we know about squaring numbers and square rooting numbers? Well, if you square a number, you're saying 5 times 5 gives you 25. If you square root 25, you're reversing that same process. So you're saying take the square root of 25, go back to where I started. So when you see a square root of a number and it's being squared, you end up exactly where you started, back at the 5. You've lost the square roots here because the square and the square root cancel out. When you notice that the factors of a third contain these square factors over here, then we can simplify things even further. An example is the square root of 50. The square root of 50 has a few different factors in it. You could say that 50 equals 10 times 5, but when you're trying to simplify things, it's always easiest to look for the largest square factor that is inside of the number you're looking at. So inside of 50, we know that the larger square factor is 25. So what we can do is we can say the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of 2 gives you 50. Now to simplify this, what we can do is say, well, the square root of 25 is what? It's 5. So I can say it's 5 times the square root of 2. Now just like with algebra, algebra we have things like a times b equals a, B. We just join them together. You can do exactly the same thing here. We can say it's equal to 5 square root 2. So when you see something like this, it simply means 5 times the square root of 2. Or if you want, you could go backwards and make 5 equal to the square root of 25. So it's the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And you could go backwards further and say, well, 5 square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 50. Now, if you'd gone the wrong way, we could have done something different. We could have said that the square root of 50 is equal to the square root of 10 times the square root of 5. And you'd be thinking, well, I don't see any square factors over here. Well, you don't need to let that stop you. We can keep moving forward with this and say, well, what is the square root of 10 made up of? It is the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. And we still have this other square root of 5 over here, so we have to place that there. So now we've got the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 gives you 50, because 2 times 5 is 10 and then 10 times 5 is 50. Now, in that last example we did, we know that the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 will give you what? That will give you the square root of 5 squared, or it will give you the square root of 25. And what's the square root of 25 going to give you? So let's have a look at that. We're going to have the square root of 2 times the square root of 5, 
and that's squared. You can put the squared there, or if you like, you can say it's squared like this. So what is the square root of 5 squared going to give you? That gives you the square root of 2 times 5. Why is it 5? Well, 5 squared is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So we've got to this stage, and once again, you just rewrite it, and you put your whole number on the front, 5 square root 2. We'll try a few questions. So simplify the following. We've got the square root of 12. So what is the larger square factor that you know goes into 12? The square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is 2. So we've got 2 times the square root of 3. And we just simplify that by saying 2 root 3. We'll try another one. The square root of 40. Now you might choose some different factors here which don't exist over here. You might say 20 times 2, but you can see that there is no square root of 20 over here and there is no square root of 2, so it's not really going to help you. Instead, what we could do is say the square root of 4. That goes in here. So we can say the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And the square root of 4 is 2 root 10. Okay, we'll try one more. The square root of 200. Once again, you want to try and find the largest square factor that exists. So for 200, we know it's going to be 100. So we've got the square root of 100 times the square root of 2, and that's simply going to be 10 root 2. Now in some cases, you might miss the largest square factor, and that's not really a problem, but it might take you on a longer journey. So have a look at this. You could do the square root of 200 equals the square root of 25 times the square root of 8. 25 times 8 is 200. You'd then say, well, I've got the answer. It's 5 root 8. Now, even though that's correct, it's not fully simplified. You have to keep going further. So we'll open that back up again and see what it's made of. We've got 5 times the square root of 8, and that's also 5 times... What's the square root of 8 made of? We've got the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So the square root of 4 is what? We've got that as 2 over here. So we've got 5 times 2 times the square root of 2, and that is 10 root 2. So you can see choosing the wrong factors can still be fine, but it does take a longer time to get to the final answer. Now one more thing to take note of is 10 multiplied by the square root of 2 will be exactly the same on your calculator as 5 times the square root of 8, which is also the same as the square root of 200. All of those will give you exactly the same decimal answer. So how do we turn our simplified thirds back into just square roots? Well, we might have something like 3 root 5. Now 3 root 5 is 3 times the square root of 5, and 3, prior to becoming a 3, we could have said it was the square root of 9, because 3 times 3, or 3 squared, is 9. So we've got the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 5, and we can just multiply these together now, the square root of 45. So we've expressed this as a square root of a positive integer. Another example would be 2 root 3. Well, we're going to say that's 2 times the square root of 3, and that's going to give you 2 squared is 4, so it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and then that's simply going to be the square root of 12. So before finishing up, we'll have a quick look at division of thirds, we've got here the square root of a divided by the square root of b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b, or you could say the square root of a over b. So an example would be the square root of 12 divided by the square root of 25. We could also say that that is the square root of 12 over the square root of 25, and we could once again write that as 12 over 25 with the entire square root going around that like that. So the square root of 12 over 25. Now if we want to solve that and simplify it, what we could do is say, well, we know that the square root of 25 is what? It's going to give you 5. So we've got over 5. We can finish that up straight away. But the 12 over here is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 4 is a 2. So we can say it's 2 root 3 over 5. That's fully simplified. We'll try one more. So what about 4 root 18 over 3? Can we simplify that any further? Let's try it. Well, here on top, we know that it's just going to be 4 times the square root of 18 over 3. We could once again make that 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 9 all over 3. 
And here we've got the square root of 9. We know that that's going to come in handy because that equals 3. So we could say that it's equal to 4 times the square root of 2 times 3 all over 3. Now if you like, what you can do is you can say 4 times 3 is 12 and then divide it by 3, but we might as well just cancel that out. We can see that 3 over 3, they cancel. So what we can now do is just finish that up and say that we have 4 square root 2. Do one more. We'll try 5 root 200 all over 25. So what can we do here with that square root of 200? We know that it's simply going to be 5 times the square root of 200 over 25. Can we break this up into these square factors? Well, we could. We could say it's 5 times the square root of 100 times the square root of 2 all over 25. How does that help? Well, the square root of 100 is 10. So what we've got is 5 times 10 times the square root of 2 all over 25. Can we keep going? Yeah, we can say we've got 50 times the square root of 2, or you could say 50 root 2 if you like, over 25. And last of all, does 25 go under 50? Yeah, it does. We could say it's going to be 2 root 2.